真珠湾攻撃から81年を迎える今日日米両国間に勃発した不幸な戦争によって亡くなられた多くの御霊に対し慎んで哀悼の意を捧げます私たち世界連邦日本宗教委員会は宗教者信仰者が宗師宗派の垣根を越えて集い心を一つに世界平和を祈りその実現のために日々活動しています1982年5月ニューヨークの聖ヨハネ大聖堂で日米宗教者会議が開催されましたその日と私たちはここパールハーバーに立ち寄り粛々と神戸を垂れ異例の祈りを捧げましたその時以来毎年欠かすことなく赴き昨今では招待の上スピーチの絵をいただきこの慰霊式典に参列しています本来ならば一昨年施設団派遣39回目となるはずでしたがご承知の通り新型コロナウイルス感染症の世界的流行により2年間かなわずかないませんでしたそして本年ようやく訪問することができました来年は40回目を迎えることとなります2016年12月26日私たちは日本国外務省からの要請を受け参列の絵に置くしましたが当時の安倍晋三首相が日本国総理大臣としてアメリカ合衆国のバラク・オバマ大統領と共に共同声明においてこの地から寛容の大切さと和解の力を世界に訴え恩衆を超えた声明に感動を覚えましたその安倍元総理大臣は今年7月演説中に教団に倒れました日本は大きな悲しみに包まれております志半ばでの非業の死はさぞ無念であったことでしょう今もなお疫病や戦争紛争環境問題などは私たちに暗い影を落としますしかし私たちは常に強い希望を持って立ち向かわなければなりません先人たちの努力犠牲に心から敬意を表し今こそ日米両国の関係のように国境を越え人種宗派の垣根を越え全人類が心を一つにしてさまざまな問題に取り組む時です。This year makes the 81st year since the attack on Pearl Harbor. We have all come together to pay our respect to those who sacrificed their lives when our country suffered the tragedy of war. Our organization, the Japan Religious Committee for the World Federation, has members from various religions and faiths. Our mission is to bring true peace. In May 1982, we participated in the Japan American Religion Conference at St. John's Cathedral in New York. On our way back to Japan, we made a stop at Pearl Harbor to pay for peace and offer our condolences. Every year since then, we have been welcomed back to continue for pray for peace. Because of the recent pandemic, we, are, we have not been able to participate for the last two years. However, we are fortunate to be here today and look forward to visiting again next year. That will be our 40th visit to Pearl Harbor. On December 26, 2016, I was honored to be invited by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to witness the historic visit by Japanese, former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and President Barack Obama. They offered condolences for those who died and showed the world how the power of reconciliation and tolerance can bring world peace. Sadly, former Prime Minister Abe was killed while giving a campaign speech this past July. World peace continues to be quite fragile these days due to threats such as epidemics, war, disputes, and environmental destruction. We are here to share the wisdom that was passed down from previous generations so that all human beings will learn to live together in harmony and love. 
for that, the only path that we will lead to world peace. Now is a time to look past our differences and unite, just as the United States and Japan have done. Let us all play. Let us pray for those who gave their lives for peace. Let us pay our deepest respect to the honorable souls. May they rest in peace. Let's pray for true peace in the world. May everyone on us live in happiness. Let us become one family. Let us all live together with love and compassion. May the world be full of right and honesty. Let us develop our selves for peace. May heaven guide us and show us the way. Takama no kamuro, kamurogi kamurobi, kushiki mitama wo sakihae tamae. Thank you. Reverend Shishino, thank you so much. Correcting the name, Reverend Shishino. And Miss Miyahara, thank you for your translations. Today's event allows us, the generation of the 21st century, to recognize, honor, and give thanks to the generation of military veterans and civilians who served during World War II. Their lives and their legacy will never be forgotten. We are grateful to have several veterans in attendance with us today from all around our great nation to commemorate Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day and to honor us with their presence and their stories. Unfortunately, we recognize that we could not have all the veterans with us on site, though they are not with us here, they are not forgotten. With that in mind, at this time, we would like to present a special welcome message from Lou Conter, a Pearl Harbor survivor who was stationed aboard the USS Arizona on the morning of December 7th. Lou will honor all of the veterans who could not make it to today's ceremony, but who still hold a special place in our hearts and in our thoughts. Here Hello. is an audio recording. I'm Lou Contra, a Pearl Harbor survival and World War II veteran. I am one of two remaining survivors from the USS Arizona. My remaining Shipmate Ken Potts lives in Provo, Utah. I had hoped to be with you in Honolulu for this 81st commemoration, but my 101 year old legs are not what they used to be. <laughs> Back in 1941, most of us stationed at Pearl Harbor were in our teens or 20s. As quartermaster of the watch on December the 7th, 1941, I remember it was beautiful Sunday morning. The Arizona band members were gathering on the ship deck to play colors at 0800. But before they could finish setting up, they heard the 
unmistakable whine of flying planes. The rising sun on the planes told us that this was not a drill. We manned our battle stations on the relentless strafing and bombing, but the damage to the Arizona was severe. We took a heavy bomb alongside the starboard side forward, a number two turret, and it went through five decks into the lower handling room and exploded the forward magazines, which had all the powder, a million pounds of powder for the 14-inch guns. We then started helping the men with it in the flames, come out of the fire, help them lay down until we could get them over the boats to get them to the hospital. I've been back for many commemorations, and each time I am on the Arizona Memorial, I take a moment to view the names of my shipmates and thank God for their ultimate sacrificing. Thank you all for attending this important commemoration in person, and those of you who are watching on a stream. Your interest in preserving World War II history is vital and important. We need to make some future generations understand what Pearl Harbor really was about and what was at stake. Our schools need to teach more than a paragraph on Pearl Harbor. I briefed a lot of high schools and junior high schools, and they're all happy to have the truth come out. And what really happened? In their history books, there's only a half a page on Pearl Harbor. They should have at least a chapter, if not more, because that's a very important part of history and for our children to teach their children and remember. Thank you to the organizers of this gathering for dedicating this commemoration to the greatest generation. That includes those who served in uniform and those who worked on the home front. The heroes are the ones that didn't come home. The ones that lost their lives the 2,403 members of the military that lost their lives that day, including 1,177 of my shipmates on the Arizona. Thank you, my wonderful family, for being constantly supportive. One of my proudest and most commemorative was last year when I pinned my pilot's badge, which I had received in November 1942 on my great nephew, Marine Captain Ray Hauer. What an amazing 100th birthday present it was for me. Thank you all. I hope to see you all next year getting my legs in good shape. Thank you very much, and remember Pearl Harbor. Hello. Thank you, Lou Conter, for taking the time to share his thoughts with us on this important occasion. For over 15 years, the National Park Service and the United States Navy have partnered together to conduct this annual National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day commemoration. Here to share an official welcome on behalf of the National Park Service is Tom Leatherman, Superintendent of the Pearl Harbor National Memorial. Mr. Leatherman has been working for the Department of the Interior for over 32 years, starting as a biological science intern at Pinnacles National Park in 1989 while still in college. Most recently, before moving to Hawaii last year, Mr. Leatherman served as superintendent at four National Park Service historic sites in the San Francisco East Bay area. Eugene O'Neill National Historic Site, John Muir National Historic Site, 
Port Chicago Naval Magazine National Memorial, and Rosie the Riveter World War II Home Front National Historic Park. In October of 2021, he arrived on Oahu as the permanent superintendent of the Pearl Harbor National Memorial. Please welcome Tom Leatherman. Aloha and good morning. Among the dignitaries we welcome today, and please hold your applause to the end, the Honorable Josh Green, the new governor of Hawaii, and his wife, the new Lieutenant Governor Sylvia Luke and her husband, the Honorable Charles Sams III, Director of the National Park Service, Rear Admiral Stephen Barnett, Commander of Navy Region Hawaii, Admiral Gregory Todd, Chief of Chaplains, Frank Lands, Regional Director, Interior Regions 8, 9, 10, and 12, members of the Consular Corps and Senior Executive Service, and I'd also like to recognize all the other flag and general officers, additional elected and appointed officials and community leaders. E komo mai, welcome. As the superintendent at Pearl Harbor National Memorial, it is my honor and privilege to co-host this annual commemoration event, Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Even more of an honor, I get to be in the presence of these amazing heroes to our country, the World War II veterans and their families who have joined us today. And in that group, I'd also like to recognize the Rosie the Riveters that are with us, and the Rosies I worked with at my last park, as mentioned, um, in Richmond, California. You inspire so many, including myself, and I thank you all that you've done in service to our country. For this 81st anniversary of the attack on Oahu here at Pearl Harbor, I can't help but reflect on the changes and events that have happened over this last few years. Just last year, I'd only been here a couple months, and we were holding the ceremony across the water at Kilo Pier. Uh, we were still under COVID restrictions, and so there were a lot fewer people that were able to invite to join us at the event. I continue to be deeply grateful for all the warm welcome and support that everyone's given me in my time here. And in particular, I'd like to call out the U.S. Navy and Pacific Historic Parks. Pacific Historic Parks has been responsible for providing a lot of what you have see here today, but they also support our education programs and as, as Lou Conter pointed out, our education programs are extremely important for the work that we're doing here at the site. One of our major milestones over this last year is the completion of the new Shoreside Dock, which allows us to provide access, even more access, to the USS Arizona Memorial. Every 15 minutes now, we can take people over for tours of that site. The tours would not be possible if it wasn't for the support of the United States Navy and specifically the Arizona Detachment, who share our mission for the stewardship of the memorial. It is clear to me that the relationship between our organizations is stronger than ever, and I look forward to continuing to build it even stronger in the years to come. As each year passes, we say goodbye to more of our friends who served on December 7th, 1941, and this year we see this reflected in the number of veterans that we have here joining us. We are fortunate to have those that are here, and we are fortunate to be able to share this live streamed to those who were not able to come in person. Although we continue to have fewer veterans join us, our resolve to ensure their stories are not forgotten will only get stronger. Together, we can continue to honor those who served and sacrificed by sharing the diverse stories and history related to the events from before, during, and after December 7th and the U.S. involvement in World War II. The everlasting legacy of Pearl Harbor will be, the share, will be shared at this site for all time, as we must never forget those who came before us so that we can chart a more just and peaceful path for those who follow. It is my honor to serve here at Pearl Harbor National Memorial 
and I will do everything I can to ensure that we honor and preserve this everlasting legacy in the time that I am here. It is now my pleasure to introduce Rear Admiral Stephen Barnett. Admiral Barnett is a native of Columbia, Tennessee. He is an alumnus of Tennessee State University, where he received his Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, and Troy State University, where he earned his Master's of Business, Business Administration. He earned his commission at Aviation Officer Candidate School in 1991. Barnett's sea duty assignments have included Patrol Squadron VP-46, USS John C. Stennis, and VP-5. As a flag officer, Barnett served as Commander Navy Region Northwest and Commander Navy Region Southwest. He assumed command as Commander Navy Region Hawaii on June 17, 1922. Please join me in welcoming Admiral Barnett. Aloha. I offer a warm welcome to all the World War II veterans and all other military veterans, active duty and retired, as well as your families as you join us here for this very special occasion. I also want to offer my sincerest regrets and heartfelt aloha to the Pearl Harbor survivors and the veterans of World War II who couldn't be with us right now. Those members, those members of the warrior community, who we also call the greatest generation. We know you're not physically here, but be assured you're with us in our hearts. You're with us in our thoughts and in our gratitude. Your lives, your example of honor, your examples of courage, your examples of commitment will never be forgotten and will never cease to inspire. My thanks to Tom Letterman for, for the leadership that you provide to the National Park Service and for our continued partnership for this important annual event and for allowing us to conduct the event right here on this site. Director Sams, good to meet you, sir. Thank you for your service as a Navy vet, and thank you for your continued service and important work of the National Park Service. Admiral Todd, we'd like to welcome you and your lovely bride back to Hawaii to visit with us. Thank you for taking the time to participate in this ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, how very appropriate it is that this ceremony is conducted right here in the contemplation circle of the beautiful grounds of the Pearl Harbor National Memorial. From this vantage point, you can see much of the historic harbor right behind me. We can try to imagine what it must have been like 81 years ago to stand on the shore of Pearl Harbor as destruction rained down on the ships of the mighty Pacific Fleet. Or what it must have been to be a civilian working a few miles behind me at the shipyard. And for that fact, all over the island Make no mistake about it, they too felt the weight of the attack and did their part to defend their island and their homes. I often wonder what it was like for the soldiers, the airmen, the Marines, and the sailors who fought desperately to defend the island, to defend the aircraft, the airfields at Hickam, at Wheeler, Eva, Kaneohe, Fort Island. Just a few hundred feet where I stand is the Remembrance Circle. There you'll find the names of every soul lost in that attack, both military and civilian. So, as we remember their sacrifice, we are brought to this circle right here to contemplate what it means 81 years later. Pearl Harbor holds a unique place in the American landscape as the location of the bookends of World War II two iconic symbols right behind me, the USS Arizona Memorial and the USS Missouri provide a powerful, a powerful visual reminder of the lessons learned from the veterans who served throughout the duration of the war. 
They serve with valor, beginning on the attack day, December 7, 1941, until victory was achieved and peace was announced on board the USS Missouri in 1945 in Tokyo Bay. We honor, we honor the courageous men and women, military and civilian, both alike, who work tirelessly to defend our freedoms and secure the liberty that we enjoy this very day. They secured the victory and established the peace by serving in the military and serving on the civilian workforce. They were in the battlefields of faraway lands, also on the home front. From the farms of rural America to the factories, the shipyards, and the supply depots of this great industrialized nation. Back in 1943, Pearl Harbor was an operationalized base. So here, right here, in the middle of the Pacific, our Navy focused on the needs of the fleet. Pearl Harbor ensured our ships and our planes had the repairs, the fuel, and other supplies needed to succeed. And we continue that very legacy right now here 81 years later. And when that war concluded, another great legacy was born. Today, America's relationship with the people of Japan is a model of good relationships everywhere. Britain, France, Germany, once mortal enemies, in some cases over centuries, are now strong democracies, friends, and allies in Europe. Our Navy trains and operates with the Japan Self-Defense Force and other navies throughout the world, including right here in Hawaii, as you know, during the rim of the Pacific exercise. The world, with just a few outliers, just a few outliers, value security, value prosperity, and value stability. Histories show democracies work together to foster peace and cooperation. To the veterans watching around the country and around the world, we are inspired by your courage. We are inspired by your courage under fire. We vow to honor each and every one of you and remember your legacy well past this ceremony. We will honor you with our lives and with our service as the defenders of the values of liberty and peace that you fought to preserve 81 years ago. Your legacy, your legacy will never be forgotten, and we salute you. Mahalo. Thank you, Admiral. Now I would like to introduce our keynote speaker, Charles Sams, the director of the National Park Service. Charles F. Chuck Sams III was ceremonially sworn in as the 19th director of the National Park Service on December 16, 2021, by Interior Secretary Deb Holland. Sams is Cayuse and Walla Walla and is an enrolled member of the Confederate Tribes of Umatilla Indian Reservation in Northeast Oregon, where he grew up. For 30 years, Sams has worked in tribal and state government and in the nonprofit natural resource and conservation management field, with an emphasis on the responsibility of strong stewardship for land preservation for this and future generations. He most recently served as Oregon Governor Kate Brown's appointee to the Pacific Northwest Power and Conservation Council, where he held a position as a council member from March to December of 2021. Sams is a veteran of the U.S. Navy, where he served as an intelligence specialist. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from Concordia University and a Master of Legal Studies in Indigenous Peoples Law from the University of Oklahoma School of Law. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in a warm welcome for the director of the National Park Service, Mr. Charles Sams. Good morning. Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor to be here with you all today. The Biden-Harris administration has so much gratitude for the veterans joining us today. You are part of an everlasting legacy of this sacred place. 
an embodiment of the pride we have in our great nation. I served in the United States Navy myself, so it is especially meaningful to me to honor my fellow sailors on this most solemn day. This year's theme is Everlasting Legacy, and here at Pearl Harbor National Memorial, we hold the stories, people, and memories close to our hearts. The first person account for the, uh, from those who were here on that morning 81 years ago add a power and meaning to this site in a way that no one else can. Today and always, remember all who served, especially those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. We honor them by preserving their legacy as an inspiration for future generations. My late grandfather, Charles F. Sam Sr., answered the call to duty and served in the Pacific Theater during World War II. He was a gunner's mate on the USS Converse and served under the command of former Chief of Naval Operations, Arlie Burke. Six of my grandfather's brothers, my great uncles, all served during World War II, from North Africa to the Italian campaign to the eventual liberation of Europe. Our family stories of service led me to serve in the world's greatest Navy. Their legacy, their stories, their sacrifice were a true demonstration of what a nation can do when it's called to war. A crucial part of the National Park Service mission is to share our collective history, including the difficult and sometimes untold stories for all people, for all times. By joining us today, paying your respects, learning about the history and sharing it with others, you are now part of this everlasting legacy. I challenge you to carry the Pearl Harbor legacy forward sharing the stories of valor and sacrifice with your friends and family, and instilling a sense of respect and inspiration in future generations, as we heard that call this morning. That's how we keep the everlasting legacy of Pearl Harbor alive and continue to honor those whose lives were lost so many years ago. Thank you for coming this morning and sharing this moment with all of us. And again, thank you to all those who have served and are now serving our great nation. We are forever in your debt. Thank you. Thank you, Director Sams. This morning, we will place wreaths to honor the territory of Hawaii, Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Space Force, and Coast Guard. The wreaths will be presented by active duty and Guard Service members, as well as National Park Service Rangers. The wreaths you're about to see presented are an expression of our gratitude and a symbol of our unending appreciation of service and sacrifice. Today we honor heroes, military and civilian, who lost their lives on December 7th, 1941. This formation, moving from the Remembrance Circle, which preserves the names and memories of each American who lost their lives on December 7th, 1941, represents our past and present. It honors those who fought in the name of freedom 81 years ago and recognizes the veterans and current active duty members who continue to serve our country with honor, courage, and commitment. The wreaths will be placed in the contemplation circle as an indelible reminder of the legacy of these service members and civilians, and the hope that every future generation never forgets the many sacrifices that make freedom possible. The bell from the USS Arizona will sound in honor of the sacrifice of each service. The Territory of Hawaii. On that fateful morning, we remember the 49 civilians who lost their lives as a result of the attack. As a base for all the military services, the then Territory of Hawaii and its citizens played a major role in one of history's greatest salvage and repair efforts, quickly restoring most of the damaged ships and expediting their return to the fleet. Hawaii's citizens opened their homes and businesses to servicemen stationed in the islands and to those returning from war patrols. Today, the state of Hawaii remains a strategic and welcoming home port for our military, continuing to offer aloha to all. Representing the territory of Hawaii is First Sergeant Brandon Kumele of the Hawaii National Guard and Ranger Shea Summons from the National Park Service. United States Army.
While many history books tend to focus on the Pearl Harbor attack, the brave members of the United States Army fought diligently to defend their posts on December 7, 1941. From Schofield Barracks to Bellows Airfield, the U.S. Army stands ready to defend our nation and maintain a steadfast presence on Oahu. Representing the United States Army is First Sergeant Ronald Stickney and Ranger Amas Akima III from the National Park Service. The United States Marine Corps. Many may not realize until visiting the USS Arizona Memorial that the United States Marine Detachment made up part of each battleship's crew. A total of 109 Marines lost their lives that day, 105 perished aboard ships in Pearl Harbor, and four were killed in action at the Eva Mooring Mast Field. Representing the United States Marine Corps is First Lieutenant Tyler Ashton and Ranger Nate Larkin from the National Park Service. United States Navy. 1,999 sailors lost their lives in the December 7th attacks on Pearl Harbor and Navy Air Station Kaneohe Bay. Many sailors met their final resting place in the waters directly behind me while defending their ships and helping their shipmates escape the burning waters. Many more assisted in rescue and recovery efforts in the days and weeks that followed. Representing the United States Navy, NC-1, Ashley Kapahea, and Ranger Daniel Diapais from the National Park Service. United States Air Force. Though not yet a service in 1941, the United States Air Force was formally referred to as the Army Air Forces, and here in Oahu as the Hawaiian Air Force. On December 7th, Lieutenants Ken Taylor and George Welch scrambled to their aircraft parked at Haleiwa Field and took off to brave the skies against incredible odds. Representing the United States Air Force is Tech Sergeant Matthew Harris and Ranger Jason Okrasa from the National Park Service. United States Space Force. America's newest military branch, the United States Space Force, carries the proud legacy of the Arm, Army Air Forces as guardians of America's interests around the globe. They represent the latest example of carrying on the legacy of the generations of Americans we honor today. Representing the United States Space Force is Tech Sergeant Gerald Matugas and Ranger Billy Crow from the National Park Service. United States Coast Guard. At the time of the attack, the U.S. Coast Guard vessels in Hawaii were all stationed in Honolulu. At 6.45 a.m., the patrol craft Tiger intercepted a dispatch from USS Ward that claimed destruction of a submarine. Later, Tiger itself came under enemy fire as it participated in the defense of Oahu. Representing the United States Coast Guard is DC-2 Noah Ta'amu and Ranger Joe Borgia for the National Park Service. At this time, the wreath presenters representing today's generation of veterans will salute the greatest generation for their service and their legacy. Would all Pearl Harbor survivors and all of our World War II veterans please remain seated so that we and all who are present here today can honor you. We acknowledge that on December 7, 1941 and the years that followed, you executed your duties at your posts and weathered the storm of war. It is because of you and all those who served 81 years ago 
that we enjoy freedom and liberty in this great country today. Will everyone please stand and join me in expressing our appreciation. A grateful nation applauds you today. Please remain standing for the benediction and Marine Corps rifle salute. At the conclusion of the rifle salute, a bugler from the United States Pacific Fleet will blow taps from the contemplation circle. A second bugler will echo the call from the remembrance circle, symbolizing the everlasting legacy presented, represented here today. Rear Admiral Gregory Todd, the Chief of Chaplains of the Navy, will now offer the benediction. Rear Admiral Todd is a native of Seattle, Washington, he earned a Master of Divinity from Concordia Seminary, St. Louis, Missouri, and a Doctor of Ministry from Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary, Charlotte, North Carolina. He serves as the 28th Chief of Navy Chaplains leading the religious ministry for the over 570,000 personnel and of the Marine Corps and Guard. Rear Admiral Todd. Aloha. Let us pray. Eternal Father, in whose hands rest the souls of your people, living and dead, we are grateful for your presence with us here today as we considered the sacrifice of shipmates 81 years ago. For those who grieve their losses from that day, we pray for your comfort to relieve their burden. For those of us who follow in the tradition of naval service, grant us faithful hearts that we may remain true to our calling to defend our homeland, to advance the cause of freedom, and to honor our friendships with allies. Grant us also the courage to be faithful to those with whom we serve today. Lord, we think of for our shipmates in need, let us bring a willingness to help. For shipmates facing challenges, let us bring your strength of spirit. For shipmates feeling alone, let us bring the assurance that we stand together. And finally, O oh Lord, we pray for our leaders that you may grant them wisdom. For our shipmates who are underway standing the watch or in harm's way, that they may rest in your protection and have a joyful reunion with loved ones. And for ourselves, all of us here, that by faith in you and your strength, we may be spiritually ready to live lives of honor, courage, and commitment, that we may reflect your love. Amen. Thank you, Rear Admiral Todd. Stand by for rifle salute.
Side boys post. On behalf of the National Park Service and the United States Navy, thank you for attending today's observance of the 81st anniversary of the attack on Oahu and for continuing the re to remember and honor the sacrifices made by those who served here on December 7, 1941. To those who are watching our ceremony through our online broadcast, we also extend our sincere aloha. Thank you to the Defense Media Activity for providing the live stream. This ceremony would not have been made possible today without the critical assistance of Pacific Historic Parks. Please remain standing for the departure of our official party. Chief of Chaplains, departing. Navy Region Hawaii, departing. <laughs> Director, National Park Service, departing. Mr. Tom Leatherman, Superintendent, Pearl Harbor National Memorial, National Park Service, departing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Please take a moment to meet our veterans in attendance and offer a personal expression of gratitude for their service, their sacrifice, and for giving us the opportunity to honor them here today. Please enjoy the patriotic music performed by the United States Pacific Fleet Band as you depart. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day and that you will always remember Pearl Harbor. Thank you. <laughs>